Hello all, welcome to another session on cyber security. In this session, we'll be taking a look at what is primality testing, and we'll also see the theorems on primality testing. Let's go to the session now. We'll start this session with a very simple question. Let's take this number, and you have to tell me, is this number a prime number? And immediately you will tell me it's a prime number because you are used to this number. It's a very small number. And you know the factors for 3 are just 1 and 3. So you can very well say, yes, it's a prime number. Let's take another example. Let's say we have this number 47. Now if I ask you this question, is this number a prime number? Of course, you're going to tell me and yes, because it's again a small number. And you know the factors for 47 are just 1 and 47. So the answer is going to be an yes. But if I give you a number like this, 2457783, now you may take some time because this is not a small number. We are not used to this number. And you need some time to really check on and tell me whether it is a prime number or not. Actually, this number is a composite number. It has more number of factors. So now the question is, given an integer n, how can we say whether that number is a prime number? So this is all about primality testing. Primality testing is helpful in determining whether a given integer is actually a prime number. So we'll be learning Fermat's little theorem, which will help us determine whether a given integer is a prime number. Let's now understand what this Fermat test is all about. So what Fermat test for primality says is, if n is a prime number, then we have a power n minus 1 to be congruent to 1 mod n. The value for a should be anything between 1 and n. So that's how you determine whether n is a prime number. So what you do, you select n and then you select a value for a such that it lies between 1 and n. And you check whether a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. If this is true, then we can conclude that the number n is probably prime. Now I am using this word probably prime because Fermat's test is a probabilistic uh, theorem. That is, the accuracy of the algorithm depends on how many different values for A we take. Let's take an example here. Let's say if uh, we need to determine 17 is a prime number. So N here is 17. So what we have to do is we have to take a value for A that lies between 1 and N. Let's say that A is equal to 2. Now we'll substitute a power n minus 1 and then we'll check whether it is congruent to 1 mod n. So like that, we have to repeat this process for many values for a. We can take a to be 3, a to be 5, a to be 6. So we have to repeat these steps for many different values for a. So higher the number of values for a, then higher will be the accuracy. So the accuracy depends on how many different values for a we're going to take and check. So that's what this theorem is all about. If a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n, then we can declare a to be probably prime. Suppose you take a value for a and then you find a power n minus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod n, then we can declare n to be composite and stop. So we'll be taking the value for n to be 5 in our example and our objective is to check whether n is a prime number. So according to Fermat's little theorem, we have to determine whether a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. The very first step is we have to select the value for a. And what should be the value for a? a should be anything greater than equal to 1 and it should be less than 5. So let's take the value for a to be 2 now. And what is our next step? We have to substitute the value for a and n in this equation. So it is nothing but a is nothing but 2 power n minus 1. What is n? n is 5, 5 minus 1. We have to check whether it is congruent to 1 mod n. What is n? n is actually 5 here. So what is 2 power 5 minus 1? It is 2 power 4, whether it is congruent to 1 mod 5. What is 2 power 4? It is nothing but 16. Whether 16 mod 5 is equal to 1 mod 5. So when you divide 16 by 5, the remainder is going to be 1. And what is 1 mod 5? It is 1. 
so we have uh, determined that when the value for a is equal to 2 this one holds a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n so we can declare that 5 is probably prime now what is the next step we have to take a different value for a and, and try whether a power n minus 1 is still congruent to 1 mod n so that's what is given here repeat the steps k times with different values for a higher the value for k higher will be the accuracy of your algorithm so now we will repeat the steps with a different value for a we'll select a to be 4 what we have to check whether a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n so we know what is a what is n we'll substitute the values here and check so it is 4 power 5 minus 1 is it congruent to 1 mod n what is n here n is 5 so what is 4 power 5 minus 1 it is 4 power 4 you have to check whether it is congruent to 1 mod 5 or else we can say 4 power 4 is nothing but 256 is 256 mod 5 equivalent to 1 mod 5 yes when you divide 256 by 5 you will get the remainder as 1 and 1 mod 5 is equal to 1 so again we have come to a conclusion that a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n so we can very well say n to be a prime number what is the value for n we have taken n is 5 so you can check for all the values starting from 1 to anything less than 5 so 1 2 3 4 when you take the values for a to be 1 2 3 4 and when you try that in this equation for all the values you will be having this particular uh, equation to be true we'll have a power n minus 1 to be congruent to 1 mod n so it's not necessary that you have to take all the values you can take random values for a and then you can very well apply that in the equation check and then we can declare that a is probably prime so higher the values so the more number of values you take and check the higher will be the accuracy for this algorithm so now let's take a look at some of the problems with fermat's theorem say if a number fails the fermat's test then it's certainly composite say you take some value for a and then you substitute that in this equation and you check whether a power n minus 1 whether it is congruent to 1 mod n suppose you find that a power n minus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod n we can very well we can very surely say that that number whatever number n we have taken that is actually a composite number let's uh, go with n is equal to 4 let's check whether n is a prime number using Fermat's little theorem let's verify this so we have n is equal to 4 let's select a random value for a which is uh, greater than or equal to 1 and less than 4 so let's take a to be 2 let's substitute the value for a and n in this equation and check whether a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n that is 2 power 4 minus 1 is it congruent to 1 mod 4 so what is 2 power 4 minus 1 whether 2 power 3 is it congruent to 1 mod 4 or else we can say whether 2 power 3 that is 8 mod 4 is it equivalent to 1 mod 4 when you divide 8 by 4 the result the remainder will be 0 so 0 is not equal to 1 because 1 mod 4 is 1 so what we have arrived at here is we have arrived at a situation wherein a power n minus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod n so you can stop the process here and you can very well say this number n so n is equal to 4 right this number is not a prime number it is a composite number whereas the other way around if a number passes the test using Fermat's little theorem it's not that it's always a prime number there are certain situations scenarios wherein that number can also be a composite number so for this I have taken an example 561 see 561 is actually a composite number but our objective is to use 561 and check whether 561 is a prime number or a composite number by applying Fermat's little theorem 
So let's select a value for A. A should be something greater than or equal to 1 and less than 561. So let me select the value for A to be 2 so that we have a lesser number of uh, computations to make. So when A is 2, what we have to check? Whether A power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. That is 2 power n is 561 minus 1. Is it congruent to 1 mod 561? So what we have to check here is whether 2 power 560 is congruent to 1 mod 561. So we have to compute what is this 2 power 560. Can you tell me the result? Can you compute and tell me the result? So what is 2 power 560? So I have performed this computation. I will go to a new slide and write the results of what I have received for this equation. Let me write the computations in a new slide. Uh, let me go to a white screen here. So what we have to find is whether 2 power 560 is it congruent to 1 mod 561. So let's compute what is 2 power 560. Let me start with the smallest power. Let's compute what is 2 square mod 561. This is nothing but 4 mod 561 and uh, we get the result as 4. Now let me compute what is 2 power 4 mod 561. So the result of this is 16. The next step we are going to compute 2 power 8 mod 561. See, we have already seen how to compute uh, uh, larger exponents in our modular exponentiation class. I hope you were uh, following that. If you are not clear with this, you please follow that lecture so that you will understand why we are performing these steps. So let's find what is 2 power 8 mod 561. The result is 256. Likewise, we will compute what is 2 power 16 mod 561. What is 2 power 16 mod 561? The result here is going to be 460. And next we have to go and compute what is 2 power 32 mod 561. What is 2 power 32 mod 561? The result is 10. We have to compute 2 power 64. We have to go to the next level. 2 power 64 mod 561. What is 2 power 64 mod 561? It is 511. We have to still go further. We have to compute 2 power 128 mod 561. What is 2 power 128 mod 561? It is 256. Next, we will compute 2 power 256 mod 561. Uh, what is 2 power 256 mod 561? The result is 460. Let me write the remaining computations here. What is 2 power 512 mod 561 that is the result is 103 so we have computed 2 power 512 mod 561 but what is our objective we have to compute 2 power 560 mod 561 so we can write 2 power 560 as 2 power 512 into 2 power 32 into 2 power 16 mod 561. So we are just writing 2 power 560 as 2 power 512 into 2 power 32 into 2 power 16 mod 561. Here we will apply the properties of uh, modular arithmetic that is 2 power 512 into 2 power 32 into 2 power 16 mod 561 is nothing but 2 power 512 mod 561 into 2 power 32 mod 561 into 2 power 16 mod 561 the entire mod 561. So the entire result mod 561. So this is nothing but we know what is 2 power 512 mod 561 that is uh, 103. We know what is 2 power 32 mod 561 that is uh, 10. And we know what is 2 power 16 mod 561 that is uh, 460. Now we have to perform the entire thing mod 561. So what is the answer here? We get 103 into 10 into 460 as 4880140, the entire thing mod 561. So when you divide this number by 561, you get a reminder of 1.
So what we were able to prove here is, we were able to prove that a power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n when n is equal to 561. We can say n is probably prime, but the hard reality is n is not prime. 561 is actually a composite number. You can very well check that. 561, it has more factors, 3 into 11 into 17. You can very well check this, 561 is a composite number. So what we learn from this example is, we have certain numbers, composite numbers, that will still satisfy the condition for Fermat's test. So these numbers are called Carmichael numbers. I hope I am pronouncing it right. So we call such numbers to be Carmichael numbers. The definition is the composite integer n is a Carmichael number if it satisfies this. a power n minus 1 is equivalent to 1 mod n for every integer a relatively prime to n. So we have infinite number of Carmichael numbers and it starts from 561 and I have given some examples here. So this is what we have taken. We took 561 and we were able to achieve a per n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. So that is the weakness of this algorithm. Say if a, a number fails the test, for sure it's a composite number. But when a number passes the test, there is a chance that, that it's also a Carmichael number. So that's all about Fermat's uh, little theorem. And I hope you understood how Fermat's test is applied for checking whether a given number is a prime number or not. Thank you.